Well, hello, web travelers. This is Steve of Facebook. And I'm in my bedroom, and it's after midnight. And, well, my feet really, really hurt. There's spasms. And let's see. See it? It's in the heel, spasming, and in the tips of my toes. And the bottom part of my feet are really red. Let's see if you can see. It's horrible. I, I should soak them. The only way to take away the the pain is like ice cold water. I put I drive my feet in there, but I can't do it for too long because it's well, it's damaging uh, also. But see, let me tell you something. The, the the reason a lot of people don't understand about this form of neuropathy, it can be caused by AIDS, HIV, or diabetes. So um, who knows? And I, I think it, it started, though, happening when they, the doctor told me that, that I was diabetic. Uh, I think it was 2012, I think. Um, when I went to the doctor, I said, why are my feet burning? Why do they hurt at night? And, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm suffering here. What's up? And that's when I learned about the neuropathy and... and well, the misery that it can cause, you know, and they gave me at first gabapentin and then pills for the uh, diabetes, but that didn't work. So I had to start injecting, and at first I just refused to do it. And then the, the, uh, the doctor that I saw was very kind and very gentle and got a pen out and showed me how to do it. And I said, okay, okay. I didn't even feel it when I put it in, in me, the, the, the needle, the pen. I mean, the, the needles they make today are very short, very thin that you don't even know. And then you push the button and the insulin gets delivered. So I said, okay, I can do this, I can do this. And for, well, for years now it's been that way. But the damage that it did to the nerve endings, that's what the pain is, damaged nerve nerves in, in, in my feet caused by excess sugar in the blood it, there's no cure for that I, it, it just won't repair itself so forever until the day I die I'm going to have this problem and you know that's a real tough pill to swallow you know and I've been through some really tough times in my life I have to say but that well the other time was when I was sitting on the edge of the hospital bed and they came in and told me that I had AIDS. I had no clue. Well, I, I'd i been really, really sick with this really nasty cold and I had been to the hospital before and they gave me this cough syrup and and stuff and it, it didn't work. That wasn't it, you know. So one day I was having trouble sleeping I was in and out of sleep and a voice kept saying you gotta get up you have to get up and go to the hospital I'm telling you it was like some ghost or something was telling me don't stay like you are you're going to die so I got up and I, I got to the hospital okay parked the car and got in and my oxygen was really low and they wheeled me and they said, well, you're going to have to stay. So they wheeled me across to some, you know, a ward uh, that I shared with a, this drunk guy. He was really funny, but he was a drunk and he got, he had a visitor sneak booze in. And uh, he said, you're not going to tell, are you? I said, that's not, you know, live, you live and you die, okay? It's up to you. And he looked at me like, you know... You're right. But that didn't stop him from taking a swallow. That's the first encounter I had with an alcoholic. He's probably dead by now, whoever he was. Oh, but I was there for over a week, and they, were, they wouldn't even let me. I didn't even have a bath or a shower until I insisted. I said, I had all this shit in my arm. And they would come in at night and make me breathe an inhaler because the, the pneumonia would, had been, that's what was trying to kill me. And I did. I did what they said and coughed up sputum for them. Oh, God, the attacks. And then when they took blood, it wasn't like just from your arm. It's, it's from the, the, the 
the artery right in your wrist dark dark black like blood oh man did that ever hurt but they were doing it to see you know is this guy gonna make it and so and then I was on a drip bag with what was back Bactrim uh, a substance called Bactrim which saved my life it really did it, it cured the lung infection and stopped the advancement of, of what was trying to kill me and uh, I I was there for over a week and I was just going nuts I thought to myself you know why couldn't I just do this at home why couldn't I take some back back from pills and you know and and the other stuff they wanted me to take and be in my bed because I was only a, like not even a, a mile from the hospital it was very close so I started to tell the doctor, I want to go. I want to go home. I'm, I'm okay now. I'm, I can walk and I'm fine. And I was. I could breathe, you know, really good and stuff. And I was getting, you know, I was getting better. I didn't want to stay there forever. And uh, at first they wouldn't, they didn't want to let me until I insisted. I said, look, it's, it's either going to work or I'm going to die. So let's just do it this way and let me, te te you know, tend to myself. And... Um, I just knew all the time, though, I was going to be okay. A little, some kind of a voice or some kind of feeling, like when I was in bed, drifting out of maybe consciousness. Something kept telling me, you know, you got, you got to do this, you got to go. And then when I was in the hospital, I was sitting on the edge of the hospital bed, and the nurse and the doctor came in with these grim-looking faces, and I said, what? And they started to blah, 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 and I said, Come, will you... Just tell me what. And, you know, they were afraid to. So there I was sitting there and they told me, they said, you have AIDS and your CD4, CD4 count is like four. or so It was then. It was really very low. Because usually a healthy person is 1,500. It's the, the T cells, your, your, your blood. So I'm sorry about moving the camera around, but my arm gets tired. But anyway, so that was how that happened, and then a few years, I got out of California and I into Nevada with the hopes of just kind of like being around my brother and stuff, you know, because I was scared. And that never came to be because his ex, or not his ex-wife, his wife was just kind of weird about the whole thing, and, and I don't know, I think she was jealous. Every time I went to visit my brother, she had her big fucking mushy and everything it's like then we went for a ride in the car just him and me around the neighborhood and come back and she was crying and acting like a nut and uh when i saw that it's like oh boy my brother saddled with somebody that's kind of choo choo so i i'd never i never went back to visit after that that was it you know i'd, I'd gone up there to visit and and that drama had to happen. I was like, what, what are you doing? What are you crying for? And all of this stuff, you know, and she wouldn't say. And then Gordon kept saying, Paula, Paula. Uh, every time she started to say something, it's like, well, what, what is she trying to say? What have I done? You know, and uh, I'll never forget that. That was really, really, really painful for me to see that. So I never went back there to visit them. So uh, all this time here in Reno, you know, and then I, the loss of my good friend Mark and stuff, you know, and I just want to leave. But uh, I'm going to have to postpone the move for a month because I went to my mechanic friend and I had him look over the, the car just to make sure I will make the 400 miles and in this heat and everything, you know. I, wanna, I don't want to get stranded with all my stuff and the nowhere to go. And he recommended to not take the trip, not do the move until... A couple of things in the engine were, you know, have get worked on and stuff. So I got to stay here and I got to do that and pay for that. So I'm going to have to pay that rent increase at least for another month or so. And I really don't want to give them that money. I hate them so much. It, it really, ooh, do I hate them. Because, I mean, it doesn't leave me with very much to live on at all. But the first thing, whenever I do get money, the rent gets paid. Then Lily's food gets bought from Chewy. And whatever's left over, well, okay, that, you know, I'll work, try to work it. But it, this is going to be real tough, but I'm going to have to postpone my move. And I've been sitting here and I've been, 
Nothing really breaks me down enough to cry, but I've been... I just got to feeling so sad and so... You know, these, these, or, these obstacles that happen every now and then in your life and stuff. And this is a, one thing I really wanted to do to get away from here. And, and I'm, I'm, something is stopping me, you know, and I just started crying and, 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 and got, I got that out. Though that's good and healthy. The doctor says that's good, you know. You, you have to release your inner turmoil. And so a lot of people do it through rage and a lot of people do it through tears and, and so forth and so on. You know, I do it through tears. And I, and I have a shell of steel um, that I've built up around me over the years, uh, being through a lot of stuff. But I'm going to get out of here, that's for sure. I just got to make sure that that car gets me to where I need to go. And now the hard part is telling my friend because he... He's really looking forward to, for me for com coming there. You know, it's just going to have to wait. I just can't do any more about it. So there you have it. And, uh, I, you know, just hang, you know, watch my videos and visit my page now and then and stuff. Because I really, I need, I need the company. It helps, gives me strength, you know, strength to to cope with things so okay that's enough of this long video